Hey, happy Friday. Well, it's Saturday for those of you guys that are tuning in from Australia and New Zealand. You guys are just waking up to your Saturday morning. But here it is a very wonderful and relaxing Friday afternoon. I love Fridays and I thought what a perfect day to chat about this topic which was a really hot topic in my tribe group and a lot of people wanted to know how did I do this business before we brought Walt home full-time and I think that is an amazing question because all of the time when I think about how I run my business now as compared to how I ran my business three years ago, it's very different. And the amount of time I can pour into it is very different. So I'm excited to fill up your cups with that information. And you guys don't hesitate to ask questions. If I see them scroll through while I'm um, doing this episode live, I will absolutely answer your questions. So. Don't hesitate, totally shout them out. I want to fill up your cups and explain anything that you're curious about. Okay, so some of the things that, uh, about, about just running a business as a full-time stay-at-home parent. Um, first of all, it's crazy. It's so crazy, you guys. And your dedication just to rocking it has to be so stealth and completely you just have to be so ready to just dive right in right um and in a way I always felt like I knew I was going to have more time later on down the line I knew that my hustle was going to be temporary. I knew my late nights and my early mornings were not going to be forever. So in a way, I always just promised myself, this is a temporary pass to insanity, basically. So yeah. Okay. So I cannot wait to dig into my bullet points. I'm glad we have some people on here live with us. Hey, Rachel, I see some people popping on. Hi, Trisha. Like, here we go. Um, obviously today is a makeup free day and I want you guys to know that not every day I wear makeup and it's just super casual. It's Friday and we're staying in tonight. We have a big, um, fundraiser gala tomorrow. So hi, Desley. Hi, Whitney. So yes, I am totally just chilling and I want to connect with you guys about what did my business look like before Walt quit his construction job and came home full time. Um, I also wanted you guys to know that every month we get a bonus and so I get paid four times a month, um, usually just based on what my own personal sales are, but I also um, am blessed to get a team bonus that's based on my team's activity and it is actually just dropping in my account and I just want you guys to know that every single month that that bonus drops in, I still cannot believe it. I cannot believe that running your own business and being your own boss and having freedom and flexibility and you still get paid that much money. I don't know. It just, it's really incredible and it's something where I never know when the right woman is sitting here on the other side of this screen listening to this and just saying, I want it, I want it, and I will do whatever it takes to get there. Because truth be told, when I started my business, I was not after like being our provider. I was not after retiring my husband. When I started it, I was really just kind of after drinking wine and hanging out with women. <laughs> And getting, getting out of the house and having alone time. I mean, when I started my business, Clover was eight months old and Nash was two. So it was me, full-time mom, long days, sometimes six days a week. 
13, 12, 11, 10 hour days, long days, you know, with Walt being on the construction site. We were living in Austin, Texas, so we weren't even near family. We had friends that were like family, and you better believe I was at their house all the time with those two little kids. So I just want to paint the picture of like how different life is now with him home full time. Like he is seriously in the other room. I walked out to get some water because I was doing some work, you guys. All the kids are napping, everybody's asleep, and I walked out and he was like, hey, do you want to watch a movie or a show? And I'm like, I just think it's so amazing that on a Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock, I have the option of sitting on the couch with my husband and watching a show, because we actually do it a lot on Friday just to kick off our weekend. I always try not to work during naps on Friday, but I said to him, no, I still have to go live. I want to connect with my people, and he's like, okay, so I can hear him in there. He's in there watching like a TV show. How cool is that? Like He is a hardworking stay-at-home dad, and he needs to decompress, but I just think it's so amazing. Because I can tell you guys, when I, I remember when I was a stay-at-home mom and I would call Walt and I, I would say, hey, do you want to have lunch with us today? Because I just knew we were going to be home all day and I was just, you know, it was, it was dark. Like there are dark times when you're a stay-at-home parent of small children and those multiple naps and not leaving the house. And I remember saying to him, can we come have lunch with you? And he's like, absolutely. He's like, why don't you call me around 1130 and we'll decide where. So all of you guys that are stay-at-home parent parents, you know. So I get the kids all dressed and I'm just like so jazzed to pack them up and we're on schedule with naps and I'm like excited to have adult time and to have them see daddy. And I remember calling him and he was like, hey, listen, I have to go down in the tunnel. Like I cannot have lunch. You guys, I cried. I cried and I just remember thinking this is so hard and dark and I just need to talk to adults and not to small children so that's sort of where I was in my life I love my children motherhood is like one of my most prized possessions and just something that I take so much pride and happiness and joy in but you can get lost in motherhood and you can get lost in motherhood when you have two kids that are under like two less than two years apart our first two are about two years they're like 21 months and our second two are three years so long story short it was tough when I started Jamboree and I was in a place where I just didn't know which way was up like I didn't even know who I was anymore I wasn't running a business anymore I had sold my clients in Austin and although I was really finding such amazing beautiful relationships with other moms I just craved like something just for me like I don't want I don't want anyone else to have this right I don't want to share this with my children I don't want to share this with my husband I just want it just for me so then I started my business so let's talk about what did that look like like what did that even look like because I was a full-time stay-at-home mom of an eight-month-old and a two-year-old. We had a massive house in Austin without a housekeeper. And although that sounds, I'm not like, I'm not saying that in, in a pompous way. I'm just saying like I had to keep the house clean and it was a really big house and it added a lot to my plate to keep a big house clean on top of two little children. So, okay. So what did this look like? So first of all, when I started my business, hold on. Mm. The first thing I knew that I needed, oh, hey, Brittany. Okay, so before before I moved to Florida, um, so I started Jamberry in Austin in April 2014 is when I joined Jamberry. Um, some of the businesses that I had before that, the one most previous before that, I owned a social networking company. So I took on clients in Austin and taught them how to blog, build a Facebook page, have a social media presence, rock Instagram. So obviously that parlayed into amazingness for me when I decided Jamberry was for me. I did have about a um, 
18 month gap where I was just a stay at home mom. Like I, I wasn't running a side business. I wasn't blogging. A lot of you guys who have been in my community for years, you remember Casa Cullen, like our DIY blog. Uh, some of you might remember Runway Daily, which was my fashion and beauty blog. I was one of like the first fashion and beauty bloggers ever. So, um, I've been an actress and a model, I've designed wedding gowns, I've had some pretty cool jobs and they've all been me as my own boss running my own show. So I don't know any other way. Like if you put me in a cubicle and said, here's your boss, I would just ball my brains out. I wouldn't even know what to do. I would feel so claustrophobic and pigeonholed, but that's me. Like I have an entrepreneurial heart. Okay, so I joined Jamberry and I say, okay, this is just for me. And just like I shared with you guys yesterday, I just wanna pay for a date night. Like, that's what I wanna do. Like, let's just do this. But here's what I want you guys to hear. First of all, I mulled over it for probably two or three weeks. But I really did like talk to Walt about it. And why I talked to him is because I knew if I was gonna do this, I was not just gonna do it like, for fun. I said, listen, if I'm going to do this and I'm going to like align myself with a brand and be like synonymous with this, this product, I, I want to do it big time. And so he's like, go for it, babe. And I'm like, but you have to understand that we don't have a nanny. We can barely even afford a babysitter. And like our kids are not in preschool or any type of schooling. And he's like, okay, you know, because you guys, he was the full-time provider. He had never been a stay-at-home parent. He's such a hands-on dad, even as a full-time provider, but he had no idea like how difficult it is to even like, I mean, you can barely, with an eight month old and a two year old, like you can't even hear yourself think. You can barely even have conversations outside of Daniel Tiger, right? <laughs> I know some of you guys with little ones are like, 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 heart, heart, heart. Yes, yes. So I feel like I was so thankful that I just had the kind of like the audacity to sit him down and say, listen, if I do this, this is for me and this is something that I am going to run and, but I need your support. Like, and I'm not just saying I need your word saying I will support you. Like I need your physical support. And he's like, okay, so what does that look like? And so I sort of just sat him down and said, you know, ideally I will get up in the early morning hours and work before you guys wake up and I will work when the kids go to bed but I would also like to have some hours of you know working time when you get home from work and before dinner so four nights a week we planned for Walt to get home from work thankfully Walt being a construction project manager he would leave the house at 4 45 and get home around 4 4 30 most days so he would beat traffic, which was awesome because Austin traffic was incredibly different than um, growing up in a small beach town in Florida. Although we lived in San Francisco before that and traffic was almost worse in San Francisco. So, um, okay. So he would get home and you know what he would do? And this was something that I completely discussed with him. He would get home for four nights a week and he would just take over. He, I would usually have like dinner made in the crock pot. Like everything would kind of be like in its place so it wasn't a complete mess. And he would just have to like, you know, be on with the kids. There was no decompression. There was no, hey, let me take 20 minutes for myself. There was no, hey, I want to go to the gym. There was none of that. Like he got home from work after a long day of work. He walked in the back door and I walked upstairs to our office and I got to work. And I don't mean like I got to work, like I would have to then go to work in order to get my stuff done in order to grow my business. So it was this like ships passing in the night for months, right? But we always took like, I think it was Thursday and Saturday night or the two nights that I said, okay, I'm not going to work those nights. So those nights, it would be a lot more relaxed. And when he got home from work on Thursday, it would just be a lot more casual, which was nice. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, he was on and Friday, like, you know, everybody, everybody loves Friday. Like Friday's just great. Even when you have our lifestyle, which is 
you don't really have weekends or days or anything. Like, Fridays are still really exciting. So, I don't know why I love Fridays. Like, do you guys love Fridays? I love Friday. So, okay, so it was one of those things, though, where I look back and I think, I'm such a crazy direct conversationalist and of course it serves us well in our marriage in a lot of ways but it was just one of those things where I was just so direct and I was like listen like if you really want this to be a viable like income stream for our family then I need your help so he's like okay I'm gonna do it so but I said but let's only give it six months like let's say for six months four nights a week that's what our schedule looks like and it was like deal let's do it okay but you guys, it was so hard. <sighs> like, I just want to speak into all the, like, working moms and parents and single parents out there. Because I'm telling you, it was rough. It was incredibly exciting. But I missed him. And I missed family time. And I felt like either I had the kids or he had the kids. And there wasn't a lot of, like, all four of us. And... It was, it was crazy. I mean, it was intense. Like I would be online with my leaders until like one or 2 AM and we would all just be learning and growing and talking. And then I would be up with the kids at like 6 30 AM and we would just do this for months after months after months. So I don't want to paint the picture of this has always been like this freedom and flexibility and tens of thousands of dollars dropping in my account every month. Like I don't want like what? No, no, no. My first bonus was $7, first of all. And I totally bought a Starbucks and I was like, this is amazing. I didn't even really have to, like, this was passive income for me to buy this Starbucks. So I just want you guys to make, I want to make sure that everybody can hear that. Um, so he jumped right in and it was awesome. And then the off nights were huge and having boundaries with the off nights were huge. Like leaving my phone, leaving the iPad, leaving my um, MacBook Pro like in the office, even when we lived in Austin on those off nights and really just disconnecting and connecting into our marriage. And when I say connecting into our marriage, like y'all, we were tired. We had an eight month old and two month or two year old. Like I'm not talking like, I was putting rose petals and putting on like uh, an apron and baking like a romantic dinner with candlelight. Like I wish I could go back and have done that now that I'm the provider and he's the stay at home parent because that's like amazing. <laughs> no, when I say we were connecting, I'm saying we were laying on the couch watching Netflix together. <laughs> Y'all hear me. I know you do. So, but, but there was no distractions, right? It was just the two of us and all the kids were asleep and that was important. It was important that he saw that outside of this new business venture, like I valued our marriage and I wanted that sacred space for just the two of us still. So just making sure you guys hear me out on that, on those off nights, um, the late nights and the early mornings, huge. I still do early mornings. Like most mornings, I'm up anywhere between 4.30 and 5.30. Granted, I go to bed. I'm usually heading up to bed around 9.30 or 10. Um, sometimes Walt comes and sometimes he wants to catch up on sports. And so he'll come up like 15 minutes later. And it's nice because we bought my grandparents' old house in Florida and our master bathroom is the tiniest thing you've ever seen. So truthfully, I love that I go up to bed first because then I can go in our tiny bathroom and wash my face and brush my teeth and not have two of us in this tiny cramped little bathroom. So, okay, so I still do early mornings and I think that's a wonderful practice for anybody who is starting a business, especially with children. Because it is so crazy to me how much you can have like your to-do list written out and you think like when when you look at your day, you're like, oh, I can see my pockets of time. When the kids nap, like during snack, like I can see when I'll be able to work. But what I, what I figured out is kids are crazy. Kids don't care that you have to work. Kids don't care that you need to check in with like 11,000 people. Kids are just like, lady, get me a snack. Lady, turn on the TV. Lady, like... I want to go outside lady I just pooped my pants like that's what kids are <laughs> and so I just kept like having this to-do list and thinking I'd get to it so finally when I realized 
honey, you're not getting to any of this, so you better get your butt up in the morning or you better stay up late at night if you want to get anything done. So when I started my business, that was like my go time. Early, early in the morning, like I would just get up and make my coffee and do my devotional, maybe do some breathing, some stretching, like all of that would take max five minutes, but it really would just get me in the mindset to be like efficient, effective, and you know, just in the right mindset to be like a positive leader. So, okay, the thing that I think is so important is that now I have like hours where I get where I get to work and I can come in my office I can put in my earphones which I love for working at home that's another huge tip if you work at home and you have kids and you have help or you know even at night like if your partner is putting the kids down like put on earphones because I cannot believe how much my workflow is interrupted just by being like do I hear the baby crying did somebody just get hurt and fall like I'm always can hear stuff in our house, right? So when I have on my earphones, I'm just like, like going to town. So earphones are amazing. And, um, I lived in earphones those first like six months, just powering through learning the business and really focusing. And I love, um, just different yoga channels on Pandora because I just feel like, the music is like a spiritual element and there's not a lot of words sometimes. And so that way, like just the soft music. I also love to listen to classical music, which is really nice when I'm working. Okay, so let's talk about batch working because that's another thing that I slayed from day one, okay? So what is batch working? So this was really important to me. So in my business, we are, we're able to send samples of our product and we can send them in the mail very easily. We're given a lot of free samples. So I discovered early on that what was happening is like a friend would say, oh, can I try a sample of that? And I would say, sure. So I'd sit down with a card and a note card and I would write like love you you're gonna love this sample and I just realized I would just do that and it would interrupt my workflow and then the next day somebody else would say oh can I get a sample Morgan I'd be like oh yeah so I get out my card again and I would write it and package it all up and put the stamp on and my return address and my washi tape and I'd be like oh that's so wonderful and it didn't take long for me to realize how disruptive that process was. And so in streamlining that, I realized really quickly how amazing batch work is. So what is batch work? So batch work is where you do one thing and you do it multiple times for a larger chunk of time. So when I was doing like sample batch work, it would actually be one of the things that we would do on one of those nights. like. I would sit there and handwrite in all the sample cards like, thanks for requesting a sample. I hope you enjoy it. Love Mo. Like, psh, close it up and I would do like, and then I would hand it to Walt and he would put the washi tape and the stamp on and, and the return address and everything would be ready. So that way, when I'm sitting at my computer and somebody says, send me a sample, guess what is my only task? Write in their address. Like, that's it. That's all I had to do. So I actually am so glad that I was truly like a full-time stay-at-home mom when I started my business because it made me so efficient and I just had to find these systems and I had to like figure out how to do batch work, you know, because in a way, if I had the time that I had now, like I would have probably just whittled away my time and not created like really efficient systems such as like working in batches. The other thing I feel like is so important is when you're starting your business, and especially when I started it, just sitting Walt down, you guys, and having like marriage meetings and business meetings, okay? Because I've always empowered him from day one and just said like, although I'm doing this for me and this is very much like me, my show, my thing, like this is all like for me, like you're part of this business and I'm not gonna be able to do this unless you like really do support me and you're a part of it. So I've just always really empowered him as my partner to just take ownership in, in this, you know? And I know that for those of you guys that have seen us at conference, like he, people, I mean, at first he was surprised how people were like, you know, like taking pictures with me and stuff. And he's just like, oh my gosh, these ladies are crying when they meet you. I was like, I know it's like, 
so magical and amazing and he was like this is so surreal to me so anyway so then people started taking pictures with him and he's like what is happening right now but it was just so incredible to me because he's been such this amazing partner for me but this started from the beginning like it's not like it's like it started when I had my first seven dollar bonus it started when I was only making like a couple thousand dollars a month like he was my business partner then like life was changing but nothing like now right so he I love that like he had an investment in the business when the business wasn't anything like it is now and why did he have that because we had these marriage meetings and these business meetings and they were quick and I was not like about to I don't know I mean my husband does not like he's a wonderful listener and an amazing conversationalist but he would not say to me I would like to have a marriage meeting with you or I would like to have a business meeting with you like no so it's definitely me like saying let's do this like let's just make sure that we connect and chat about the business and our marriage and that was great because it really helped us like align our goals, make sure that everything we were doing, like both in our marriage and in our home, and then with this new business, which felt like at the time, like a third baby, you know, cause we didn't have kid. It was just Nash and Clover. So I think just really seeing each other eye to eye and he was able to say, I just want you to know that this is not working for me. And I'm like, okay, like, let's figure out how we can like change that. So in some of the things that he shared, like, I remember one time he was just like, I'm just worried. Like you, this is stressful. Like, I feel like you have a lot of stress on you. And that just made me like realize that I wasn't sharing some of the really great things about my business. I was just sharing like the roadblocks and the failures and the things that were stressful with him. Like I was just kind of like vomiting on him all the hard stuff and so I was so thankful that he was candid and shared that with me so those goal talks were huge you guys because I remember just I remember saying to him you know babe like I think it's six months like ugh, I still can't even believe this like I crunched numbers and looked at our team and just said like I really think if you would just we could like let's make it to six months because I think it's six months like I can I can going forward earn over six figures in a year and he's like what like he's like Morgan that's like so much and I'm like I know I know but I'm pretty sure I can do this but I just I need you to like help me because we I don't want to hire help and I don't want to like I don't I just I didn't want to hire help you guys I didn't want a babysitter I didn't even want to send anyone to school like I wanted my babies at home with me I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom all day in this crazy like business mogul like undercover I don't know so anyway so of course six months came and I did and he was like you are awesome and I'm like uh you're awesome because I can only do this because you give me the hours that I need so again I think it was more like of a teamwork ownership like both of us like cohesively working together and communicating our needs and our wants and our desires and what was working what wasn't working what's our goals so Sarah Powers says you both continue to amaze and inspire us man thank you for that I feel super tired today I stayed up way too late last night reading and um thank you thank you for that it's really sweet Sarah is my mom's cousin you guys well she's married to my mom's cousin you're awesome okay so that's a little bit about that so I feel like if you guys are ever starting a business or you're right now you know in a business and you just aren't sitting your partner down and saying like I want you to know my goals in this business and who cares if they never come to fruition who cares if I would have said at six months I want to make ten grand or more like who cares like he's not gonna be like you really disappointed me all that hard work you did it really disappointed me because you didn't make your goal like no come on like and if that is what happens then I'm really sorry because that would be really hard to be married to a partner that would would hold you to those you know ah you guys know what I'm saying okay so 
that was one of the most important things those first six months are those marriage meetings and those goal conversations. So make sure that you're having those. <laughs> Colin, <laughs> you're so funny, Colin, making fun of me. I know. I mean, I can't even imagine. Okay. So the other thing that I did the first six months, which, oh, Melissa Vega, can you just come live next door to me like again? Oh my gosh. So let me tell you about my girl, Melissa Vega. First of all, I love her. Second of all, she was my first consultant ever. She is no longer a consultant, but I just love that she was the one that was like, sure, I'll join your team. And I was like, oh, somebody joined my team. And it's just so funny to me to be like, she was my first consultant. And now we're like creeping up on 11,000 people. Bizarre. Okay, so what did I do with Melissa Vega? So she lived three doors down, not the band, real proximity, three doors down from us in Austin. She had, did they have, yeah, they had three. It was all three, wasn't it? Yes, yes, of course, yes, because they moved right when their third was um, a baby. So she had three small children, um, a boy, a girl, and a girl, and they were very close to Nash and Clover's age. So we decided we were going to do a sitter swap. And we're like, this is so genius. And it really is so genius, you guys. So every other week, gosh, I can't even remember what day. I think it was like Wednesday morning. I would take her children, or actually her middle child. And then she would take, because both of our babies, the babies were napping, like Clover and her baby, Chloe. So I would take Coco. And she, the next week she would take Nash. Okay. So while our babies were home napping one week, we would have to be like entertainers of two little playmates, right? Coco and Nash. And we'd be like, okay guys, let's do Play-Doh. Okay guys, let's paint. And it was really fun. Like I got to know Coco. And so like still when I see pictures of her in Austin, like I just feel connected to her because I got to have her like so often in my house, like one morning a week, like, and just entertaining Nash and Coco. It was like the Nash and Coco show. And then the next week I would have that morning off and she would have the kids. So to me, that was so ideal and so amazing. So if you're sitting here just being like, I can't even find time to like think and I need to make my business bigger and how can I do this when I have small children? I really want to just like make make you realize that maybe you're not thinking outside of the box with something like that. Like maybe there's a wonderful friend in your life that you could do like a sitter swap situation. And remember, like you can do that. Like, let's say you work really hard all day. You can do a sitter swap at night. Like if for those of you guys that are tuning in that are from Vero, like I got to meet Christie's from Christie's fitness the other day. And it was so incredible just asking her questions about when she started her business. And one of the things she did say to me is that they did the same thing, except they did an overnight. Like once every every other month, she would keep the neighbor's kids for an overnight. And then a couple months later, the neighbors would keep their kids for an overnight. And she said it was so amazing for like she and her husband to have an overnight every like four or five months. And so, so just know like, if what you need is a break from your business and your motherhood journey, then do a sitter swap with a friend for a date night with your husband. Like if he's the one that's like in need of your time, if your business is in need of your time, then maybe do a sitter swap during the day with a friend or do a babysitting share, right? Like share the cost of a babysitter, plop your kids in a house, both of you head to Starbucks and get your work on. Like that's another wonderful aspect of sitter sharing. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys heard that because I feel like a lot of people think that we've just lived this like little ideal life and that it wasn't hard. And it's like that picture of the iceberg where like people see like the iceberg at the top and it's just like your little bit of success. But what they don't see is like the massive iceberg, like ice cream cone in a way underneath. And that's like all the trials and tribulations and hard work and dedication and putting yourself like aside, you know? So I just think of all the ways that we dedicated ourselves and our marriage and our family life and our budget in so many ways to the success of this business before it was even for sure a success. 
I mean, it didn't take long, which was a huge blessing. So I'm not going to like sugarcoat that. Like it wasn't years, like a typical brick and mortar. It was months. So, okay. The other thing I want you guys to hear is that, um, like the difference now is like back then there were like minutes, like I would have to like do work and borrowed minutes. And I think I shared this, that one of the things I loved most was telling the kids mommy has to work and they actually loved it because mommy has to work meant you can come sit up at the table with me while I'm on my laptop and I'm going to give you a really yummy snack and you get to watch Daniel Tiger. So I would actually say, okay, you guys like put the blocks away. Mommy has to work. And they'd be like, yay. So that was incredible because just that feeling of them being excited and motivated and positive about those words meant that every once in a while if I had to be on my phone and they wanted something I would say um excuse me just for a minute mommy has to finish her work so I I don't know it's it like Pavlov's dog with like ringing the bell but in a way I feel like they've never been like oh mommy has to work you know so I don't know and I don't know if that's what started it is because I I flipped the script in their brain on the term and made it more of like an awesome situation for them I'm pretty sure they were like can you work again because I want more of that snack <laughs> okay so now I get chunks of hours though like hours and hours um, it was a little bit more difficult when Kit was born just with nursing and juggling her and sleepless nights and that sort of thing but now, now we're good. Like if I need solid hours, I can just sit at my computer and just tell Walt like, hey, I'm gonna have to go sit in there for a couple hours. Like I'm hammering out some batch work. And a lot of people ask me like, what is your batch work now? I mean, I still send samples, so it's still things like samples. But my batch work now is really like lining up posts that I push through to um, anywhere from 10 to 15 different Facebook groups in the morning. So I'm lining those up, getting those ready, working on those, I'm generating images and just getting those lined up. Um, so when I batch work, I tend to have Facebook shut. It is like, even as diligent and militant as I am, if Facebook is up, I mean, I saw Colin pop on here, like I'm like, oh, look at the pictures of Colin's kids, like how cute are they for Christmas? Like, you know, I mean, I'm ridiculous. I'm just like you guys, like I get so distracted on Facebook. So if Facebook cannot be open and if that tab can be shut, I am a lot more efficient. And I would really have to work so efficiently back when I started this business because now where I have hours, I only had minutes, you know? Okay, so one more tip that I feel like um, is so huge is, <laughs> yes, squirrel, um, is that I just think in a way People always say like, how did you do this? And how, how did this happen? But what I, what I also want you guys to know, and one day I would love to come live on here and just talk about finances. And I don't mean like boring, um, boring finances. I mean, telling our story a little bit more in depth because we worked so hard before we had Nash to be debt free. The only thing we had in Austin was our mortgage and we, so in a way, we were able to jump at the idea of, of bringing Walt home. Like, it wasn't scary to us. I mean, it, yes, it was. I'm, yes, it was scary. But it wasn't as scary because we had an emergency fund. We had cars that were paid for. Um, and in a way, like if you don't just take those jumps and those leaps and those big like chances, then you'll never know what your true capability is. So I just want you guys to know that even when my bonuses weren't as big of a blessing as they are now, but they were enough to like stabilize and hold our income at sort of like Walt's level in a way. Like we knew we'd be making a similar amount of income with a lot lower, um, like our mortgage was cut in half when we moved to Florida. And you know, it's just a little bit quieter living in Vero than it was in Austin. Like there was a lot to do in Austin, which tends to, you know, blow your budget because you're like, oh, I need to go do this and I want to go do this and I want to go see this and this. 
So living in a small beach town tends to be a, a better budget keeper because there's not as many options. But I don't know, you guys. I just want you to know, like, it it wasn't, it was like a lot of little things that added up. It was the businesses before I joined Jamberry. It was our diligence to be more frugal and save and be more, like, financial, um, like advocates for each other. You know, we, we learned a lot about each other through a course called Financial Peace University. And that was incredible. And just learning our spending habits and our saving habits and our emotional connections to money. So I just want you guys to know that because in a way, I feel like if we hadn't done all of that work previously to when this happened, I just don't know if we would have been able to bring Walt home. And if we wouldn't have been able to bring Walt home, like I wouldn't have been able to explode my business to the levels that I was able to. Because I was never, I would have never, ever, ever agreed to, to the idea of hiring help. But that's just me. Like I wouldn't have agreed to it because I... <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest on like our first date maybe I'm pretty sure that I told Walt like I just want you to know that I'm a really smart woman but I want to stay home with kids so if that's something that you are completely against then we probably shouldn't go on a second date <laughs> what a fun first date huh who does that so but I just had always wanted to stay home with kids right like it was my mission and so in a way I had this very like come to Jesus moment when the business exploded and I got really anxious about the idea of hiring help and so then you know when Walt said do you think I can do it like do you think I can be a stay-at-home parent I was like well you can try I mean and I was totally like blown away and really excited so I guess what I just want you guys to hear is like it was a lot of things adding up to that and it was a lot of his support a lot of our combination as a team a lot of late nights early mornings um, just phone conversations exchanges on Facebook and I just think at the end of the day like all I ever aimed to do was like serve people and be a blessing and connect. Like I was missing some connection in my life for sure. Just being a stay at home mom can be really hard. It can be really hard and really dark and you're just like, I feel like I could be in jammies all day every day. So in a way, I just think it was the perfect timing. We were in the perfect spot in our marriage and what we had already powered through and worked through and financially like overcome um so yeah I don't know I that's that those are some of my tips like before Walt was home I never ever ever want to sugarcoat it and and paint it the picture of it being easy because it was a really really like tough time I mean I remember calling my mom so that that Christmas we sold our house in Austin and if anyone has ever sold their house with two small children you know how insanely difficult that is because I mean I remember one time Nash where I said buddy we gotta go we gotta go can you put your toys up and he just sat down and started crying and I was like why are you crying and, or I didn't say why you're crying. I was like, buddy, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he was like, I'm so tired of putting my toys up. He was like two and a half. I mean, so tiny with his little man voice. And so we were selling the house. And I remember that was like almost Christmas. We moved to Florida in January and it was almost Christmas. And I called my mom and I was crying. And I was saying, Jamberry's just getting so big and Walt's still working and we have to sell the house. And it's just all seems so overwhelming. And I just want to, I don't even know. I don't know if we're making the right decision, right? Like, so it was scary and stressful and crazy and hectic and intense and wild but I mean look at us now like sometimes you just have to jump 
And sometimes you just have to look at each other and just be like, you know what, if we fail, we fail forward. And if we fail, we fail forward together. And that's the really cool thing too, I think about business is big businesses are built on people jumping and taking chances, you know, and failing forward. So if you're sitting there and you, you've just started a business or you just joined direct sales or you're thinking about it and you're like, how is this even going to fit my life? Like everybody's story is unique and everybody can, you know, everybody can start their own business. Like everybody has something to offer the world. And at the end of the day, like just dig in there and figure out like, what is this going to look like to our families? And my biggest advice about how I juggle it all, like as a full-time stay-at-home mom, is that I communicated. I communicated my needs. I communicated my wants. I communicated my goals. I communicated when things weren't working. I definitely communicated when things were working. Like I'm talking, like if the next morning I woke up and I realized like the kitchen was spotless, like all toys were put away, you know, like I, I would know that Walt would have had to do that after the kids went to bed when he was really extremely tired, you know. So those were opportunities where I would send him a text and say, thank you for being such a great partner. So I don't know, you guys. I just think it comes down to like communicating where you are and what your desires are in your business and and making sure that you're always finding like these little pockets for yourself. And I don't mean like... I don't mean like going and getting a pedicure or like anything crazy extravagant. Like it can be like making yourself a nice cup of tea, which is what I just did. Like, right? It can be, which I love this mug, the queen bee. Like just making sure that you're taking these moments throughout the day just to kind of like remind yourself of your goodness, you know, because starting a business is like the craziest thing you'll ever do. I mean, it is all consuming it is just like everything goes into it and I just want you guys to know like I have been living that a little bit again like the last three months just preparing for this brand and just knowing that the message I want to share with a broader audience was something that I feel really inspired and like God led to do and it's just been so difficult in a way again and has reminded me of all of this because like I've been juggling Jamberry and this brand launch and the combo has reminded me and taken me back to three and a half years ago when I started just Jamberry and how challenging it was and that I have a heart for stay at home moms or and or working women who are juggling motherhood because like just motherhood in business is like this dichotomy where I love that the kids are always going to just say my mom is an entrepreneur or my mom is a businesswoman. Um, but I also feel like you're always pulled like two different directions sometimes in motherhood and business. So just know I have a heart for it and I'm going to pour into you guys and that's like something that's so important to me. So, okay, I see Beck left a comment. Um, bigger, bolder, better. That's right, Beck. Yes. Always have a chat with your partner. If, if you guys don't take anything away and if you go back and watch from the beginning, it's like my biggest tip. Like it is the only way like we survived and it is the reason why like it is the reason why I wasn't like doggy paddling like through stay at home mom and starting a business. Like I think a lot of people are like <gasps> like gasping for breath doggy paddling and I just felt like I was stroking it like I was like doing the good stroke right because in a way I was having conversations about my needs and my wants and having conversations about his needs and his wants. So yeah, that's probably my advice. Thank you to all the amazing individuals in my tribe group, because a lot of you guys asked, like, can you really, really like break it down how things were before Walt came home? Because now they're so cushy and so different. And you know, my girls say all the time, Oh my gosh, I don't want you to have to get up at 5am for a coaching call. And I'm like, please, that's my job. And they're like, Oh, I don't want to interrupt this. And I'm like, please, that's my job. So I, it's so wonderful now because I have such insane flexibility and I can put in such concrete boundaries but I can also be a lot of I can be like so much bigger to a lot more people because Walt's home so okay you guys have a great 
Friday night, Friday afternoon. I hope you guys have something fun planned. I think we're grilling hamburgers and hanging in. We do Friday family movie night every Friday. As the kids get older, it's something that they absolutely appreciate and love. If we are out with friends or family and miss Friday, they count on it for Saturday. So that's really fun. So we're gonna hunker down and do Friday family movie night. And for my Aussies and Kiwis, um, I hope you guys have a great Saturday. Okay, take care you guys. Thank you for your time.